Hey, everybody. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to get into chapter six. Okay, so um, without going into all the specific details that uh, Travis lays out in um, chapter six, I do want to draw attention to the fact that Canada and the United States are remarkably different um, in their policy, in their um, activism, in the things that they have achieved in the way of protections for trans students um, specifically. Um, but overarchingly for trans individuals um, and draw attention to the fact that in the Trump era of politics, there was a number, a, a series of, um, again, that geopolitical like warfare that came specifically on trans persons. And so I think that this book does a great job running through those differences and really running through um, some of the core distinct issues that still need to be worked on. And I think that this chapter specifically is really good and a really good place to start if you are really thinking through trying to be an ally or um, an advocate um, in trans rights. So moving on, um, we've talked specifically about those issues of, in single topic movements prior to this. And we talked about that within the movement to intersectionality piece and really talking about that um, within the Me Too movement even. Well, really having these issues of being, the issue with being a single movement, a single issue movement or single topic movement, um, especially when it comes to trans rights is that it doesn't allow space for being not othered, it just allows for that othering to be only allowed in certain ways, right? So when we talk about hate crime legislations or right space movements, we're talking about really the ability to be politically or through policy and law seen as human enough to not be discriminated against or to not be um, what have you. Um, and, and, and hate crime legislation, while at a federal level exists here in the U.S., it doesn't at every state level. And in order to um, try something as a federal crime, um, it can get very hairy when there's not state um, hate crime legislation as well. Um, Oklahoma, where I currently reside um, after finishing my master's degree up until I decide to move somewhere else. Um, there is not hate crime legislation here. And we've seen that play out in a number of trans murders. Um, and so, and LGBTQ murders as well, for that matter, because there is not um, any kind of hate crime legislation geared towards um, LGBTQIA plus people um, here in Oklahoma. So those have negative outcomes. On the flip side of that, due to the way our justice system currently operates, the likelihood for trans panic defense or queer panic defense, or the likelihood for people to be able to justify harm being done to queer persons um, is high because our justice system is built on inherent biases and understandings um, that work within those oppressive forces, right? So we have oppressive structures throughout society that are enacted through laws and policies that we currently uphold. And so, you know, um, our justice system is inherently going to create, perpetuate, and emphasize those hierarchical structures. So the likelihood that trans persons um, would have justice within within that kind of a system, whether it be through hate crime legislations or even through um, discrimination rights or what have you, there is still a level of he said, she said, or motives having to be verified or um, trans persons have to be listened to in the first place and or their violence, the violence that is done to them has to be prosecuted in the first place in order to even make any of those things worth wild. Um, and so I say this because I think that this book lays out a really good conversation about um, 
the justice system, about the school to prison pipeline, about the ways in which other marginalizations impact um, the utilization of the justice system. But also I say this because just being a queer person, um, a LGBTQ plus person, um, anywhere under that that umbrella umbrella of queer. And I say queer as an affirming term that the community I am a part of has reclaimed, not as a slur in any form or fashion. So just to make that wholeheartedly apparent that that is something as part of that community that I use in terms of my community in a positive way, not as somebody outside of that community using that for that community, just, just because language matters. Um, but I want to draw attention to the ways and I want you to go back and sit with this chapter, especially this is one of those chapters that you got to read a couple of times and you got to sit with things that make you uncomfortable because no matter who you are and no matter what your positionality is, there's some things in there that will likely make, um, make you uncomfortable or make you have to check um, your notions and understandings of how the world operates um, that you may have been given or heard at any various points in your life. Um, and so I think that really having these conversations is, is where, we, where we start to decide what, what justice is, what equality is, what equity is, and how we achieve that for our LGBTQ plus persons, especially our trans um, people. So now that we have kind of gotten into the ways in which things have currently been operating and the ways in which some of those things are not necessarily the way in which we would like to move forward with a, with a movement for um, equity, I want to talk about some of the ways we can help. And some of these are talked about in this book and some of these are also talked about just more broadly within um, social justice movements. Um, and I kind of want to just talk about the ways in which we as humans can impact and make change, right? So one of my favorite things that Travers mentioned that I think that we, especially as parents or as humans who are in part of campus communities um, can really impact is this school culture that as a place for change. Um, while we're not kids in high schools or elementary schools or, or middle schools anymore, we are, are people that work on a, on a campus where school culture is so vitally important. We are people that engage with um, this culture. And I think as we move into a world where social media garners so much of our, um, our introduction to terms and identities that we do not hold, I think that school culture and social media have created a place of having conversations that maybe didn't always happen um, prior to them existing or giving and garnering people with the ability to have more information surrounding identities that we don't carry. And I think that in doing that, we have an ability to create a different kind of school culture, a different kind of inclusivity that, well, as optimistic as that sounds, um, is, is incredibly hard to achieve. And so even if it comes down to some of you will go on to take other classes where you will have um, individuals in, in your classrooms that either identify with different pronouns um, or are visibly out as trans and explicitly tell you so. Um, and being able to be that safe space for those individuals and an ally for those individuals is something that you as an, like a personal, personally can do, but also as an influence on those that surround you, you can do, you can impact as an example of how that inclusivity can be, can be achieved. And that doesn't mean that missteps won't happen. And that doesn't mean that there's not going to be a, times in which you do not know or don't do things in the ways in which that person would like for you to do. And that there's not a learning curve to being an ally and to being inclus inclusive as well, um, especially when it comes to language and, um, and terminology, but 
being willing to take part in that and being willing to have those conversations and is I think and a very important first step or even to acknowledge that currently a space that you operate in is not inclusive to trans people or trans persons or maybe you as a human are not. Um, that acknowledgement in and of itself is, is social change. So give yourself grace, but also push yourself, right? And so that's kind of what I want to say about that as an individual. Um, wholeheartedly as a society, I think that we need to educate. We need to have conversations about gender. We need to have classrooms that talk about gender um, at a much different level of education than you and I are having this conversation, right? Or you and I are engaging in these in these topics. Um, we need to listen and choose not to speak over. I'm not a trans person. I cannot speak for, nor do I intend to ever speak over a trans individual. Um, in this classroom, I will teach you these things, and I will teach you these things through the voices of Ann Travers, who identifies as a trans person. I will teach you these things through the lens of the trans individuals who they interviewed, because their voices need to be at the forefront of how we learn and understand the perspectives of, of that positionality, if that makes sense. Um, I also really want to touch into that punishment is not justice. Okay, so if you've experienced any kind of harm due to anyone else, that person receiving some kind of punishment for that harm, while doesn't, we'll say this, does not negate that harm. That may still be the kind of justice that you seek, but it does not make for the totality of your healing. It does not make for the totality of justice. Um, and so understanding that punishment, especially when they talked about this in the form of um, school bullying, does not make that school bully not be a school bully, um, does not make them understand that which they are bullying anymore. Um, so really working through to find creative solutions. Um, and as social workers, those of you who are going to continue to be social, like are going to move into that field, understanding that coming up to that parent and telling them they're bigoted and their ideologies about trans persons is not going to help that baby. <laughs> it's not going to help that kid, right? Like, um, but educating them on the likelihood of the positive outcomes of being a support system for that, that child may. So again, really navigating and, and having an understanding that punishment is not always justice um, and that you can't save a victim to, by creating a victim. So we really need to understand the ways in which our social justice, our justice system um, does harm and does harms in specific ways. Um, and I think that this book does a good job of really having and navigating that conversation. And so I, 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 I send you that way because I think that they do it in a very realistic and formidable way. Um, also work with it to support movements, right? Part of being an ally or being an advocate is working with and um, supporting the social movements that are behind that social change, okay? That's not to say you don't support the rights movements or the hate crime legislation because that is a piece of the puzzle. Um, and for those who can access that, that is important piece of that puzzle. But it's also to say that you also support those who are having movements against school bullying or those who have movements to create a um, trans safe space or your um, you have a on EKU's campus. Oh, and its name just slipped. It will come back to me um, in a minute. Um, but there is a a closet, a um, a specific place you can go to get trans. Um, to get gender affirming clothing, um, specifically geared towards trans students and um, has articles of clothing that will specifically gear towards um, transitioning or towards um, help expressing one's gender in a way that is affirming. And so 
if you need access to that or would like access to that, I'm pretty sure I already put that on our resources list, but if not, I will make sure that it gets on there. Um, and then again, asking yourself how else you can help. Um, and this is at a personal level, at a structural level, at a language level, at however it is that you feel you can do those things. Um, and having real conversations with what you what harms you may have already created and or acknowledge what spaces you may not have made safe for trans individuals. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm gonna leave that. But again, if you have questions or even if you wanna have a hard conversation, um, I am here to listen and I am here to listen to the experiences you have shared or you want to share and or walk you through ways you might want to approach a situation that you may find yourself in. So um, reach out if you need to and have a wonderful week. I will talk to you later. Hey, everybody.